So we study uh, systems that are connected <laughs> together as networks, like the internet and social networks and biological networks. Uh, things like who's friends with whom, or which computer is connected to which computer, uh, which web page links to which other web page. All of these can be thought of as networks. It's basically just a bunch of dots joined together by lines. It's a very simple concept, uh, but it allows you to represent the structure of a wide range of scientific systems. Uh, and then we have tools that we can use to analyze these networks and tell us various things about the systems they describe. You can imagine that uh, if you're looking at the internet, the, the internet is designed to get data from point A to point B, and the structure of that network, how the computer is connected together, is going to affect how efficiently it can get the data there, how long you're going to have to wait to see that website. Uh, and uh, you can imagine that uh, a network like an airline network, which airports are connected to which other airports by flights, could affect how long and how far a voyage you're going to have to make in order to get from one place to another. So there's a clear connection between the structure of these networks and the function of the systems they describe. And what we do is all about trying to understand that connection. We uh, often have measurements of what the network looks like, and we'd like to understand how that feeds into the way the system behaves, how it can help us understand the internet or a transportation network or a social network. So studying these network systems is not an obvious choice for a physicist studying social networks or the internet. Uh, but it turns out that there are things that we can do as physicists that shed a lot of light on these systems. There's uh, a lot of techniques that have been developed in physics uh, to do with modeling of systems that can be applied directly to networks. And so it turns out there are strong connections there, stronger than you might at first think. Um, I personally got into this because of a friend and colleague of mine who was interested on, in working on uh, these things back in the 1990s. And those days, physicists didn't work on this stuff very much. It wasn't a common topic. Uh, but he really got me interested in it, managed to persuade me that there was something interesting to look at here. And I've been doing it ever since. Uh, it turns out there's, there's uh, a lot of very beautiful connections between the kind of mathematical physics that uh, I, I do and, and these, network, these network systems um, that allows us to say things about uh, how they function and how robust they are and maybe how to make them better, uh, how to control them. Uh, and, uh, and so we've, uh, we've, there's quite an industry of applying ideas from physics to these network systems. So I think that there's a lot to be done in this area. Uh, it's, uh, it's, it's been a couple of decades uh, that uh, people have been looking at these things uh, from a serious mathematical point of view. Um, uh, but uh, I think really we've only scratched the surface under understanding a lot of these systems. They are very complex systems. Uh, there's a lot going on in these systems. Uh, and what we've done so far is we have a few examples where we've worked things out and they seem to work nicely. And we, you know, it convinces us that there's really something here and we can make something by understanding uh, these networks. Uh, but there's plenty of things that we don't understand as well. Um, to just give you some examples, uh, I think that one big area uh, that uh, we'll want to look at in future is uh, the ways that these networks change over time. Almost all of the work that's been done so far is to do with taking a snapshot of a network, like say the internet or a social network, and then analyzing it somehow to understand how that system is structured at this particular moment in time. But essentially all of these networks also change over time. The internet, of course, has grown hugely over the last 20 years, famously, and social networks, you know, patterns of connections between people certainly change on a daily basis, meet new people, make new connections. Um, and these changes are going to have a big effect on the way the systems behave, and they're also interesting in their own right. We'd like to understand how these systems change and why. Um, so I think that that's going to be one big area. We, we really believe that all of these networks are changing over time, and so far we've just completely ignored that. So that's an important element that's going to have to be added in. Oh, well, I, I'd 
uh, originally I'm here because I was invited um, uh, to speak here and uh, because it sounded like a good opportunity. It's a, it's a, a large conference, there's a lot of people here doing a lot of interesting things. Um, so it, it's fun to come here and, uh, and uh, speak and, uh, and see the other talks and posters and see what people are doing. But actually for me the main reason I go to conferences is just to meet people. Uh, I, I often find that the, the best experiences I have at conferences are the ones where you're just talking to somebody in the, in the corridors in between the talks. Um, so, so a bit of all of those things, but yeah, I'm definitely hoping to meet people and have some good conversations. Uh, so I think that that's a difficult question. What is complexity? Um, so when people ask me, I say that I'm studying complex systems, which is similar but not exactly the same thing as complexity. And, uh, and for me, a complex system is uh, a system that is composed of many interacting parts um, such that its behavior is greater than the sum of its parts. So there are some systems where you put them together and it's just you know, lots of copies of the same thing. Uh, but there are other ones where you put them together and together they have a really different behavior from what they do, the individual parts do on their own. That's what we call an emergent behavior and together that makes a complex system. So an example of that would be, for instance, a market, like a stock market. Um, if you have one trader, then you don't have a market, right? Because there's nobody for them to buy and sell from. In order to have a market, you have to have lots of traders buying and selling from each other. So the market is the complex system. It only exists because of the interactions between the parts that make it up, in this case, the traders. If you just had an individual trader on their own, then the market simply doesn't exist. So, uh, so complex systems are things that, that they exist as an emergent phenomenon that comes out of a collection of agents interacting together. And that's a complex system. What is complexity? I suppose complexity is the study of those things. Um, uh, well, I think it's a, an excellent area to work in. As I say, I think that we've only really scratched the surface of this topic, so I think there are a lot of questions. Uh, people sometimes ask me, you know, what's the big question? What's the next thing that I should work on? Of course, the, the answer is I don't know. You know. If people knew what the next exciting discovery was, then they'd kind of already have discovered it. Right? The whole point of, is that we don't know what we're going to discover. But, uh, doesn't seem like research in this area is slowing down. There's, there's more and more exciting things being discovered all the time. So I think it's a very fertile area for new research. Uh, as for advice I'd give people, I think that uh, the main thing is to find a research topic that you're really interested in. I think that, that, that what makes good science is people that are really excited about what they're doing. That's certainly been the, the, the driving force for me. Um, if, if you're really excited about what you're doing and really interested in it, then you're going to do good work and you're going to find good things. And I think that this is an area in which there's lots of exciting things to look at.